trio now known as the Tennessee Three were fighting for their jobs. Not by addressing the voters who elected them, though, but a Republican supermajority vowing to punish them. Republican House Speaker Cameron Sexton even linked their peaceful protest to insurrection. With no investigation, no consideration of a censure or some other legislative penalty, Tennessee Republicans wielded their power to call for the expulsion of the duly elected Tennessee Three. While Johnson narrowly survived the expulsion vote, Representatives Justin Jones and Justin Pearson, the two youngest black male legislators in the body, did not. Moments later, on the Capitol steps, their resolve was stronger than ever. They thought they won today, but Come they on. don't realize. Yeah. They don't realize yeah. where they started. Yeah. They started a movement they can't stop. They started, they thought was, that we were creating good trouble there, but we're on the outside now. Sometimes to get from the periphery in the back of the house, mm. you got to go to the well of democracy yeah. and demand that democracy be true for everybody, yeah. and not just the rich white men in suits. Mm. If the Republicans' goal was to silence these good troublemakers, it was far from a success. The Tennessee Three's expulsion sparked even greater protests and skyrocketed the Tennessee legislature to the top of the national news cycle. The trio had a virtual discussion with President Biden, where he thanked them for their example, and Vice President Kamala Harris made a sudden trip to enlist even more Tennesseans in the fight for democracy. You do not stifle the people. You don't turn off their microphones when they are speaking about the importance of life and liberty. Well, well, well. Let's remember how we got here, folks. After yet another school shooting that killed three children and three adults, Republican lawmakers continued their bulwark against common-sense reform, banning their colleagues from the People's House, but refusing to ban weapons of war in the streets. I traveled to Nashville yesterday to sit down with the Tennessee Three. It was their first joint interview since those unprecedented expulsions. And I began by asking now former Representative Justin Pearson about the devastating real-life impact of unfettered access to firearms. Here's our conversation. Yeah, the uh, proliferation of guns in our communities has real ramifications. Legislation being passed at the Tennessee State House that makes it easier to access a gun has real ramifications. Mm -hmm. And so I say the names of Larry Thorne and Dr. Yvonne Nelson, who were murdered due to gun violence. And it's really important that we understand this moment as a catalyst about what happened in Covenant. But there being laws that have led to this happening. And there's also been inaction. So let's talk about the expulsion. Um, Representative Johnson, by one vote, you are still a sitting member of the Tennessee State Legislature. Why do you believe you are not expelled on Thursday? Um, because of the color of my skin. So then would you say that the members, the Republican members of the Tennessee State Legislature are racist? Well, um, I would say that I was sitting in criminal justice committee discussing a bill where we were, uh, they, they would like to add the firing squad and the electric chair uh, to the methods for capital punishment. And one of the members said, I think we need to add hanging by a tree. So he called this for a hate recently? crime. This was just a few weeks ago. Yeah. And we hear comments like that. Okay. For the time I've been up there, I have heard comments like that uh, in, on multiple occasions. Mm -hmm. And um, we got a meh, eh, meh kind of pol apology, really. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he sat in a committee and called for a hate crime. He's still in that committee. Mm -hmm. We were stripped of our committees. Okay. I will say, as I was um, preparing to come down to Nashville today, uh, I got messages from, from, from folks that said, well, I, I hope that uh, Representative Jones and Representative uh, Pearson continue to keep their cool, mm -hmm. continue to stay calm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I felt unsettled by that. Yeah. Why did it unsettle you? Because what happened on yesterday was an act of violence. It was a public lynching. It was an attempt to humiliate, an attempt to beat down, and, 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 and to, to really make an example out of us. What was outrageous was the things we heard during that fake trial, in which essentially they were saying to Representative Pearson and I, 
that we are uppity Negroes. Mm -hmm. They might as well have called us boy. Mm -hmm. They did not treat us like colleagues. They did not treat us like equals, and they never have. Why do you think it was this, parti like this particular moment that moved this body to take these such extreme measures? Why was this moment different? An institution uh, is very difficult to change. And even in a moment of persecution, it will do what it is intended to do. And an institution that has its pillars built by white supremacy and by patriarchy will still produce a similar result, even in the persecution of the minority, the two youngest black lawmakers, the one of only two Democratic women in the State House. And so in this moment in time when we were all up for expulsion, race, which we're told not to talk about, Race. I mean, we were told it, race doesn't matter. R race doesn't yes. matter if, if you just treat if you if you just act like us. Mm -hmm. Race doesn't matter if you just do what we tell you to do, then you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And so that race again became the defining factor between the separation and what happened to uh, uh, Representative Jones and I and Representative Johnson. I just have to say. Uh, we're talking about the, the, the patterns of an institution. Mm -hmm. We are talking about what is embedded at the heart of an institution. There were many members that came before you mm -hmm. that sat in the seats that you all sat in. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a, a inter, some intergenerational friction going mm -hmm. on. Is that accurate? Yes. And Representative Jones is going to say more. I'll say this about some of the ancestors, um, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Cooper, whose seat who served District 86 for 26 years, um, Speaker Pro Tem, uh, Lois D. Berry. There have been some extraordinary folks who have resisted in the ways that they thought best at that moment in time, uh, who have allowed us the opportunity to be here. The truth is we cannot uh, continue to operate in a very old way of thinking in a very new moment in Tennessee and American history. Uh, it's very similar to what we tell of people who are Republicans who talk about the immutability of the Second Amendment that we do not live in 1776 where we need a militia. You have to have a reality check on what these rules, what these laws mean in this present moment. And to our uh, colleagues in the State House, we do not live in the era of the 1950s or 1960s or 1900s. We have to live in this moment. We have to operate in this moment and act in this moment. What would you like the current members of the Democratic Caucus in the State House to do? We have to be honest about the culture on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. That it is much more comfortable to conform. Mm -hmm. it, it's so interesting to me. They said, you were disruptive in the well that day. Who was the they? This is what the, the, the charges were, the resolution. And the reality is, when we first walked in the, those doors, that was the disruption. Mm -hmm. The movements, the communities, the people we, we, we represent, the, that, that embodiment, that was the disruption to a body that is so defined by white supremacy, patriarchy, and plantation capitalism. That was the disruption. Well, there are 40 members on the National City Council as we speak, as we have this conversation. At least 24 of them have um, uh, gone on the record saying they're going to support you and vote in support of sending you back to uh, the, the State House, are you, and they're going to vote on Monday. Are you confident that you will be back in the state legislature next week? I, I appreciate that, that act of solidarity from our local leaders. And so I think the question is going to be with Cameron Sexton. Um, he sent lawyers to tell us um, in the Capitol that, you know, we can't come back until the next General Assembly, which is in um, 2025. I just want to. I want to make sure I, I get this right. So the speaker of the Tennessee State House, um, his attorneys, his attorneys, yeah. they reached out to you all via your. They, they stated that at the end of the resolution, it says that you're expelled from the 113th General Assembly, and so the the ethics attorney stated that you won't be able to return. But then we looked at, we talked to constitutional attorneys, and 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 so, it seems like that can that that can uphold. You know, nothing about this was Constitution number one, but now they're going to say again, we're going to go around and make up our own rules as they're so used to doing and say that we may try and refuse to seat you. Representative Pearson, mm -hmm. you represent Memphis. Yes. And um, in Memphis is not the Memphis City Council, it is the Shelby County Commissioners, mm -hmm. County Commissioners, who would have to vote to mm -hmm. send you back to the State House. Now, 
NBC News has not confirmed this, but I told you I was in the Nashville streets today. <laughs> and I heard chatter mm -hmm. um, amongst members of the state legislature, amongst folks locally um, here, people whom I know in Memphis, who said that there is a concern mm -hmm. that if the Shelby County commissioners do move in support of you, mm -hmm. that Memphis's $350 million ask that is currently before the state legislature mm -hmm. to fund uh, a project in the city, I believe mm -hmm. it's convention center or stadium? A stadium is It's first, a stadium, course. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that they are concerned that that ask would be mm -hmm. pulled, that it would not be met. Have you heard that? I've, I've definitely heard that. Uh, rumor. I heard there's some lobbying uh, by people in positions of power to make that happen. I am not sure if it's 100 percent true. No one has told, come and told me they're, what they're about to do. The question for our county commissioners is what price can we be bought for? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't think there's a price for our democracy. I don't think there's a price for our citizens who want to make sure their voices are heard on an issue as important as gun violence. Right. I, I really believe that there will be members of the county commission and a majority of them, uh, seven of them, who would vote uh, to ensure District 86 continues to have representation. But the threat uh, that, that is coming from some folks right, to take away funding. This again deals with the way that the state government operates mm -hmm. because that budget's passed by the state legislature. And to be able to control uh, a, a young black representative, right, it is to wield money. Right, as a, as a stick against a majority black county uh, from making sure that they have someone who's representing the voice and the will of the people. You know, um, we know that we have an, a retaliatory administration. Yeah. We are seeing it legislation against our major cities. Yeah. And it's, it's constant. It's, it's kind of remarkable. It's almost, it's almost like the mob. Mm -hmm.